Hello, I'm Dr. Dempsey and this is the Allied Trades Assistance Program. We're presenting a series of sli educational slides on mental health and substance abuse. Today we're going to talk about depression. Depression is by far one of the most prevalent mental health disorders that we see uh, in the United States. Uh, there are many people, probably over 10% of the population at one point in their lifetime is going to be diagnosed with a depressive disorder. 10%. That's an enormous amount of folks. That means that there's probably another 10% who will never see a physician or a psychologist, and so that diagnosis is probably underreported. Now, depression is a constellation of symptoms. It is not just one symptom, and it's very important to understand that. It is normal to occasionally feel sad, and for many of us, there will be many points of the year that we will be sad and not have a lot of energy. That is not depression, and that's not what we're talking about today. When we're talking about depression, we're talking about a condition that you can have that has to take place for at least a few weeks. And the, the symptoms have to occur almost the whole time you're awake, and it has to be ongoing for at least a few weeks. Now, what are some of the symptoms of depression? The obvious one is that you're sad. However, one that is not obvious is that some people who are depressed, especially adolescents, are irritated. They get very irritable and annoyed very easily. Their symptom of depression is not sadness, theirs is anger. And for some adults, they have the same issue. They have an anger issue that is probably masking depression rather than sadness. The second part about depression is that you often not, you do not even know you have it. And one of the reasons you don't know you have it is because depression alters your ability to concentrate and pay attention to things. So if you find that all of a sudden you start having attention problems, or concentration problems. Let's say you like reading a book and you're not able to focus on that anymore. And that's something that's pretty recent, not something that's been going on for a long time. Then it's very important that you know that that could be a symptom of depression. Another symptom of depression, one that is pretty significant, is that you have an alteration in sleep. Either you are finding that you're sleepy all the time and sleeping a lot, or you're not getting any sleep at all. All of a sudden you start to have insomnia. Another symptom is that you do not enjoy things as much as you did before. You may not enjoy eating the same foods that you ate. You may not enjoy watching the same programs on television. Maybe you don't enjoy some of the activities that you are engaged in anymore, one of those activities being sex. You may find that you are thinking about things and doing what is called ruminating, that you're thinking about the same things over and over and over again. Often this is a sign of depression. Another more obvious sign of depression, but one that people rarely talk about, is if you think about taking your life. Depression is by far the number one illness that folks who commit suicide have when they complete the suicide. Often it is undiagnosed and untreated, and people feel very isolated. Isolation is another sign of depression. Weight gain or weight loss being more than 5% of your body weight is a sign that you may have depression. Now, it's very important to understand that there are other illnesses that have those symptoms. Most of those illnesses are medical in nature. So your first step if you think you have a depressive disorder is to see a medical doctor. A medical doctor should then do a workup to make sure that you do not have other physical things going on with you. There are illnesses such as diabetes, or hypertension that can create depressive symptoms. There are also other medical conditions for which you could be taking medication now that can be creating depression. For example, if you're on hypertensive medication, that can often create depression. Folks who are being treated for diabetes or high cholesterol also can have depression from that. Folks who have asthma disorders can have depression and anxiety disorders created by the medication that they're taking. So it's very important that you see a medical professional before you just assume or diagnose yourself. That leads us to people often, when they believe that they're depressed or have a mental health issue, will rely on other ways to treat that illness other than what is deemed reliable by the medical community. One way people treat their depression is through substance use. Maybe you find yourself drinking a little bit more than what you would like or you find yourself using somebody else's medication, such as a Xanax or a Valium, or something else that somebody else may be taking. 
It is extremely important to understand you should never take somebody else's medication. There can be medical consequences to that, and it's illegal. The second part about that is some people have learned that if they take herbal supplements, they can alter how they feel. The important thing to understand about herbal supplements is you should not take them without the supervision of a medical professional because herbal supplements are very similar to medications. In fact, they often work the same way medications do. So you may be taking more than what you should have taken, or you may not be taking enough. And so seeing a professional to help you with that will be uh, very important. An example of that is about 10 years ago, people started taking garlic pills to help reduce, um, to help reduce blood flow or to increase blood flow in their body. They were, it was supposed to help with being a blood thinner. Well, what happened is after some of these supplements hit the market, individuals started to have injuries that they would normally have. Typically, they would cut themselves, and they wouldn't be able to stop their bleeding. The supplement of the garlic had, as one of its consequences, it became a blood thinner. And what would happen is some of those folks who would just have a routine cut that require, require stitches would have significant medical complications because of those supplements. Another example of that is somebody who may take St. John's wort to help themselves with depression. St. John's wort has been associated with um, suicide because the folks who took it did not exactly know what they were doing when they did take it. Okay, one more comment about suicide. One of the times that most people will commit suicide is ironically when they start to feel better from their depression. And if you are not being monitored, in your depression and you are taking a medication that makes you feel better, that can often have dire consequences, including suicidal thoughts. So who do you see if you have a depression? You want to see your general practitioner first, just to rule out that you don't have a medical condition, and then you want to request that your general practitioner refers you to a psychiatric professional. You should see a psychiatrist or a psychologist because those individuals know how to treat depression and they know the signs to look for in case you're depressing, your depression is worsening. More importantly, they understand how the medication will work to in increase your mood and decrease your depression. The research that has been done since 1980 is clear that taking medication alone is not effective in treating depression. However, taking medication and treatment has been shown through several studies that will reduce your depression. So it may take more time than you want to put into it, but it will be effective. There are resources out there to help you find treatment for depression. Some of those resources are your employee assistance program. The second part of, it, of this slide is depression does not always look the same for everybody. So you may have some other mental health issue that a qualified mental health provider could diagnose and treat. There is no reason that you should, you should feel depressed. There is no reason that you should continue to suffer. There is help and it is effective. And one of those resources is the Allied Trades Assistance Program. Their phone number is 1-800-258-6376 or 215-677-8820.